Hi, I'm Jacob Wagner. In this video, we are going to look at how to work with the layer effector. In this scene, we have a linear cloner with nine clones in it. We're going to add a layer effector. So we click the add effector button and change the type to layer. We are going to work with the scale. So we switch on scale. If we look at the effector settings for the layer effector, we can see that it only has one setting besides the weight, and that is the source layer. Down here, I already have prepared a source layer for it. It's right now just a gradient ramp that goes from black in one end to white in the other end. We're going to go into the effector settings and change the source layer to be the displace layer. And then we're going to go into scale and set scale X and Y to 100. As we do that, you can see that it's now using this color from the displace layer to determine how much these clones are being scaled. So the one at the right, which is directly above pure white, is going to be scaled to 200%. And the one at black is going to be scaled to 0%. So it goes from plus the value that you put in here to minus the value that you put into the settings. So minus 100 to plus 100 in this case. And then the one in the center is directly above the middle gray color. And that's going to be completely unaffected. So the middle gray color is the zero point, and then it goes to minus at one end and plus in the other end. So if I wanted this to go from zero to 100, instead of going to from minus 100 to plus 100, I would have to go into the displace layer and change the colors. So in start color, I can go in and instead of having black, I will put in the middle gray color, which is 100 and 28 in each of the three color channels. And you can see that now this one is going to be completely un unaffected and this one is still going to be 200. Let's undo that. Of course, a linear ramp is not the most exciting result. So let's try something that's a little more fun. In the displacer layer, I've already prepared a turbulent noise. And if you look at that, you can see that I also have animated the evolution of the noise. So the noise is moving around. And as the noise is moving, we can see that now the clones will move with it. So we don't have to display the layer, of course. We can disable it down here, and it will still be affecting it. And now they're going to scale randomly, but they're going to be animating in a random way. Let's try to do that again. Let's try to put some color in there too. We can switch on the color channel down here. And go into the effector and the color, and we can set this color to something like maybe green. And now some of them are going to be tinted a little bit with green, but it's not so much. Only if they hit something that is pure white, they're going to be completely green. But we also have this sample color checkbox. And if you check this, it's going to pick the color from the layer that is displacing it. So if we turn on that layer again, we can see that it's picking the layer color that is directly below the clone. In this case, it's black and white. But we might want something that is colorized. So we're going to try something that we haven't tried before in these videos. We're going to add two effectors, not just one. So the first effector that we have here, we're going to call that displace. Let's switch off this layer for now. 
And we are not going to use the color value on this one. We are only going to use the scale. And then we're going to add a new effector by clicking the plus button. And the new effector we will rename to color. And select it in this uh, setting box. It's very important that you have the right one selected. And then click the color channel. And of course, remember to set the type to layer. And here, the, instead of using the displace layer, we are going to use the color layer. And the color layer is exactly the same as the displace layer. The only difference is that it also has a tint filter, so that instead of ranging from black to white, it's now ranging from red to blue. So in the effector settings for the color effects that we created, we're going to go down to color, and we're going to ask it to sample the color. And we also need to remember, of course, to set the source layer to the color layer that we want to use. And now we're going to get this result. So we are going to make, we're going to use the displace layer to scale them up and down. And then we're going to use the color layer to colorize them. OK, so that was almost everything about the layer effector. One thing I want to mention is that the layer effector is the effector type that is using the most computing power. So sometimes it can be a little slow. A lot of the things that you can do with the layer effector, you can actually receive using other effectors. So if you can use other effectors than the layer effector, you should do that. However, sometimes the best way to go around things is to use a layer effector because you have a layer that you can put anything into and you can customize it completely like you want. But just know that it can be a little bit heavy. All right, thank you for watching. See you in the next video.